Hello everyone. Welcome to part three of the Book of Enoch, an in-depth look at the fallen angels, the end time prophecies, and the Son of Man by Todd Armstrong. Now starts a little while. Alright, so now we are on part three. The Son of Man is where we're going to start at. Alright, so you got to remember the time period this is from. You got the Son of Man being talked about 3,300 years before Jesus. Meaning that Christianity did not come up with this concept because Christianity wasn't around. This may come as a surprise to many people. That Christianity may come from somewhere else. Well, it certainly does. And all these visions that Enoch had go into all these different realms. They were all have happened or talked about. They make the most complete sense out of any other story I've heard about the Anunnaki, the Nephilim, any of the things that I've researched. The Book of Enoch makes more sense than anything else by far. And I think that I've shown just how deep it really goes. Alright, so let's start. We got while being showed all the heavens, earths, and sheols, which is he our hells, Enoch encounters a place that smells of frankincense and myrrh, and the very next place to go to has a strong fragrance of cinnamon. So, those frankincense and myrrh, obviously, three wise men. Everyone knows frankincense, myrrh, and gold are what was brought to the Son of Man. So, Enoch went to a place that smelled like that. Now, why did they bring those fragrances? Or, or those things because they were fit for a king and the cinnamon is also something that goes with uh, the acacia tree the cinnamon acacia tree and that is another ointment that was used and t discussed at some part in the bible i'm not sure where but i i have heard that that is in there on someone's breakdown of it at one point in time can't give the guy credit, I forget who it was. Alright. <clears throat> so then the next point is, And the second voice I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of Spirits. Enoch 45. So he's saying he heard more than one person blessing the elect one. Saying that there is one and the elect ones. So the elect one, capitalized E, capitalized O, meaning that that stands out more than the rest. Because it says, I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones. That doesn't have capitals. So it's saying one with the many. The next point, it says, On that day, mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable. You know, again, on that day, mine elect one. The end times prophecy with the Son of Man, the elect one. That's chapter 45, uh, verse 3. <clears throat> I mean, you see, the places of rest shall be innumerable because there is unlimited mansions, is what he's seeing, what I told you in part two. So then we got the next bullet point. And at that hour, that son of man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits and his name before the head of days. Yeah, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. He shall be a staff to the righteous whereon to stay themselves and not fall, and he shall be the light of the Gentiles, and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him, and will praise and bless and celebrate with song the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason hath he been chosen and hidden before him, 
before the creation of the world and forevermore. And the wisdom of the Lord of spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous, for he hath preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness, and have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of spirits, for in his name they are saved, and according to his good pleasure hath it been in regard to their life. That's Enoch chapter 48, verses 2 to 7 right there all that stuff is talked about about jesus and all those ways and this is you know current day people talk about jesus in this way no one else has ever been talked about in this way next bullet point i mean it speaks for itself you know that's why i don't need to really go on that should blow some minds right there that this is 3300 years before jesus saying that this is occurring before time begins his name was picked okay so next bullet point yea mighty kings who dwell on the earth ye shall have to behold mine elect one how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Enoch 55.4 You know, Azazel, one of the fallen, and mine elect one will sit on the throne of glory and judge Azazel and all his associates. Plain as day. And all his hosts, which means the humans that let Azazel in. Because remember, the fallen aren't physical. Well, maybe they became physical at some point, but this is talking about also those who are non-physical who are in the host. The host being the human body, the vessel. Okay, then the next point. And after that, their faces shall be filled with darkness and shame before that Son of Man. And they shall be driven from his presence, and the sword shall abide before his face in their midst. All right, let's go to the next one. Enoch 51, verses 2 and 3. And I don't know why it said 5a in here, but it was not from 5a. I don't know what this is, but that I left it because that's what it said. So, for in those days the elect one shall arise, and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. For the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved, and the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel, for the Lord of spirits hath given them to him, and hath glorified him. Enoch 51, 2 and 3. So he's saying the Lord of spirits and mine elect one are two different ones, two different beings. And remember, the Lord of spirits is the most wise among us, the most, the one cell that from each of us that is completely wise that's what the lord of spirits is and the lord of spirits the most wise amongst us chose the elect one sitting on my throne you know and this is talked about often about the throne and i was talking about in part two about the pyramids and if you look at the olympics and the way that the, you stand in that the middle is the largest and it's always in threes right the middle is the largest and then you go to the one side is second and then the other side of the middle is third right so that's how the pyramids are built it's the same concept you know it's if you have a pyramid with the head chopped off it's just a cube it's not exactly uh, completely a cube it would be uh, could be a rhombus or uh, a trapezoid we re remember that from math class way back when if you so if you have then somebody stand on it and their eye is then the capstone you know that's kind of what that might represent so that's what the represents the throne god's throne that's what it represents and the greeks and the egyptians were doing similar types of things 
around these same types of ideas. Alright, then Enoch 55 4, he says, Yea, mighty kings who dwell on the earth, yea, shall have to behold mine elect one, how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Yeah, that's a separate verse from the one on the first page. So, multiple times talking about judging Azazel and his associates and his hosts. So then we got Enoch 61, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord of Spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory, and he shall judge all the works of the holy above in the heaven, and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed. And when he shall lift up his countenance to judge their secret ways according to the word of the name of the Lord of Spirits, and their path according to the way of the righteous judgment of the Lord of Spirits, then shall they all with one voice speak and bless and glorify and extol and sanctify the name of the Lord of Spirits. There you go. All praising God with the elect one on the throne of glory. After the Lord of Spirits places the elect one on the throne of glory, I should say. Alright, now we get into the different breakdowns, and you see chapter 29, verse 2. You know, I saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh, and the trees also were similar to the almond tree. And beyond these, the next chapter here, and beyond these I went afar to the east, and I saw another place, a valley full of water, and therein there was a tree, the color of fragrant trees, such as the mastic. And on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon, and beyond those I proceeded to the east. So these are all fragrances that were brought to Jesus when he was a baby. And this is talking about Enoch seeing fields of this in uh, a heaven somewhere. And you got chapter 39, 6a to 7b. I'm not sure why it's like that, but that's just how it was numbered. And in that place mine eye saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith, and I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of Spirits. And righteousness shall prevail in his days, and the righteous and elect shall be without number before him forever and ever. And all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery, fiery lights, and their mouth shall be full of blessing. So... You know, this is just all talking about, this is stuff that's said about Jesus. That's why I'm, I'm talking about these things, is because this is what's talked about about Jesus. And this is so long for Jesus. And everything else that I've shared in my podcast about Jesus, you know, this just makes the most sense. It really does. This place encodes Jesus everywhere. And you can call them NPCs, or you can think that they're actually conscious people who are having a very personal connection with God. And that God is named Jesus Christ, and he happens to chase away demons that are inside of us. And we don't know that they're inside of us until they're chased away. And how do they get chased away? By Jesus Christ. Maybe other ways work. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm not saying that this is the only way, but I choose to give my praise to Jesus Christ because of my connection with him. And if you have a connection with someone else, then uh, that's, you know, that's totally up to you. And I'm not going to judge you for it. I just give my allegiance to Jesus Christ. And the reason why I'm talking about him is because He's the one that is still 2,000 years later talked about as being the son of man. And where did those things come from? And it all comes from the book of Enoch. And this, they come from visions from before when before time started. Alright, the next chapter... Uh, 45 verses 3 and 4 on that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works and their places of rest shall be innumerable and their souls shall grow strong within them 
when they see mine elect ones and those who have called upon my glorious name. Then I will cause mine elect one to dwell among them, and I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. Saying that the elect one will live amongst us as a human. Makes sense. We got chapter 46. It's uh, fairly long here. You guys want to pause this and read all this? I'll, I'll say the, the first part because this is what really helped me see what the Lord of Spirits was. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man, who he was, and whence he was, and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, this is the Son of Man who hath righteousness, with whom dwelleth the righteousness, and who hath revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden, because the Lord of Spirits hath chosen him, and whose lot hath the preeminence before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness forever. And this Son of Man, whom they all hath seen, shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats, and the strong from their thrones, and shall loosen the reins of the strong, and break the teeth of the sinners. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong, and shall fill them with shame, and darkness shall be their dwelling, and worms shall be their bed, and they shall have no hope of rising from their beds, because they do not extol the name of the Lord of spirits. And these are they who judge the stars of heaven and raise their hands against the Most High, and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it, and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their power rests upon their riches, and their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and they persecute the houses of his congregations, and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. Okay, again, this is all describing Jesus. All this stuff has been talked about about Jesus and this is way before Jesus I ended up bringing that whole chapter because it is a, an important chapter and you see right at the beginning saying his head was white like wool you talk about the head of days you know that's what helped me see that it's uh, the most wise amongst us that it is uh, you know, it is not a physical being. Chapter 48, 2 through 7, we already read this in the beginning part, but, I mean, you guys can read it again. It's really important to read all this stuff and to fully understand it. Yeah, chapter 49. For wisdom is poured out like water, and glory faileth not before him forevermore. For he is mighty, and all the secrets of righteousness and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow and have no continuance, because the elect one standeth before the Lord of spirits, and his glory is forever and ever, and his might unto all generations. And in him dwells the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit which gives insight, and the spirit of understanding, and of might, and the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness. And he shall judge the secret things. And none shall be able to utter a lying word before him, for he is the elect one before the Lord of Spirits according to his good pleasure. So, you know, this is, again, you can't lie before him because he is, he kills the lie because he's the truth. That's another reference. Chapter 51, verses 2 and 3. I, I believe we already read this. So you can read that again. 52, chapter 52, verse 6 through 9. And these mountains which thine eyes have seen, the mountain of iron and the mountain of copper, and the mountain of silver and the mountain of gold, and the mountain of soft metal and the mountain of lead, all these shall be in the presence of the elect one as wax before the fire, and like the water which, ste which streams down from above upon those mountains, and they shall become powerless before his feet. 
And it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved, either by gold or by silver, and none be able to escape. And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe himself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall be of no service, and shall not be esteemed, and lead shall not be desired. And all these things shall be denied and destroyed from the surface of the earth, when the elect one shall appear before the face of the Lord of Spirits. And read that in the part two, End Times Prophecy. Because, and I read it again because it's the elect one that's going to bring the end times prophecy. Or he's going to be here at the end time pro prophecy. So here's chapter 61 verses 5, 8, and 10. And these measures shall reveal all the secrets of the depths of the earth and those who have been destroyed by the desert and those who have been devoured by the beast and those who have been devoured by the fish of the sea that they may return and stay themselves on the day of the elect one for none shall be destroyed before the Lord of Spirits, and none can be destroyed. That means that people who have died and their spirits have stayed on the earth, they can be resurrected on that day. Because you can't be destroyed unless you've returned to Source. And since they didn't return to Source, they have the ability to stay alive. Stay themselves, as it says. Verse 8, And the Lord of Spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory, and he shall judge all the works of the holy above in the heaven, and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed. Verse 10, And he will summon all the hosts of the heavens, and all the holy ones above, and the host of God, the cherubic, seraphim, and ophanine, and all the angels of power, and all the angels of principalities, and the elect one, and the other powers on the earth and over the water. So he's saying everybody will be here on that day. Chapter 62, 1 through 8. Now you guys can go ahead and read this one if you are interested. It's not too long. In chapter 62, 9 through 16. Again, you guys can read that. This is not too long. In chapter 69, 26 through 29, I will read this one. And there was great joy amongst them, and they blessed and glorified and extolled, because the name of that Son of Man had been revealed unto them. And he sat on the throne of his glory, and the sum of judgment was given unto the Son of Man. And he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from off the face of the earth, and those who have led the world astray, with chains shall they be bound, and in their assemblage place of destruction shall they be imprisoned, and all their works vanish from the face of the earth. And from henceforth there shall be nothing corruptible, for that Son of Man has appeared, and has seated himself on the throne of his glory, and all evil shall pass away before his face, and the word of that Son of Man shall go forth and be strong before the Lord of Spirits. Again, talking about the end time prophecy and the Son of Man being the one who judges. Chapter 70, And it came to pass after this that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that Son of Man and to the Lord of Spirits from amongst those who dwell on the earth. Boom. There you go. In his lifetime, he would be raised to the, uh, to the title of Son of Man. Who was that? Jesus. And he was raised aloft on the chariots of the Spirit, and his name vanished among them. And from that day I was no longer numbered amongst them, and he set me between the two winds, between the north and the west, where the angels took the cords to measure for me, the place for the elect and righteous. And there I saw the first fathers and the righteous, who from the beginning dwell in that place. So there you go, the first fathers who, are, who dwell still living in the place where the elect and the righteous are going to go. What's that sound like? Heaven. Chapter 71, 14 through 17. And he, i.e. the angel, came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me, This is the Son of Man who is born unto righteousness, and righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. 
And he said unto me, He proclaims unto thee peace in the name of the world to come. For from hence has proceeded peace since the creation of the world, and so shall it be unto thee for ever and for ever and ever. And all shall walk in his ways, since righteousness never forsaketh him. With him will be their dwelling places, and with him their heritage. And they shall not be separated from him for ever and ever and ever. And so there shall be length of days with that Son of Man, and the righteous shall have peace and an upright way in the name of the Lord of the Spirits forever and ever. Okay, you know, that's all said about Jesus. He was never forsaken, right? He's the one that was never forsaken. Well, there you go, and you'll have peace forever from the Son of Man, right? Okay. I mean, you guys come to your own conclusions. I know it's getting repetitive, but I mean, look how convincing it is. Look how much there is to it. All right, now we get to the luminaries. All right, so now we're circling back to the fallen angels and the luminaries, right? And, and what the luminaries are here for, what they're doing. You have the luminaries are supposed to be on a perfect schedule and they're watching the earth and they are spiritual beings they are living amongst us or i'm sorry the fallen angels are living amongst us they're living in the sky right now that's what i mean is they're living amongst us and that they are spiritual beings up there right now and that they are on set courses. So the luminaries, it's uh, important to know for the entirety of the story. So here we go. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Enoch 2.1 See, they go with what they're appointed to that's they they do what they're supposed to do that's what they do you know they're not just randomly moving and i saw how the stars of heaven come forth and i counted the portals out of which they proceed and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself according to their number and their names their courses and their positions and their times and their months as Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, showed me. Enoch 33.3 Okay, they come out of portals. They all have names and numbers and courses and positions and times and months. And he wrote them all down, very exact. Enoch 36.3 Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. You know, everything it appears to rise in the east and set in the west because that's how it's set. That's how this place is set up. So here we got Enoch 41, 5 through 7. And I saw the chambers of the sun and moon whence they proceed and whither they come again and their glorious return and how one is superior, superior to the other and their stately orbit and how they do not leave their orbit and they add nothing to their orbit and they take nothing from it. And they keep faith with each other in accordance with the oath by, by which they are bound together. And first the sun goes forth and traverses his path according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits, and mighty is his name forever and ever. And after that I saw the hidden and the visible path of the moon, and she accomplishes the course of her path in that place by day and by night, the one holding a position opposite to the other, before the Lord of Spirits, and they give thanks and praise and rest not, for unto them is their thanksgiving rest. So, that's a lot of words in that one, but it's really just saying that the sun and moon are on this uh, dance, essentially, and that they don't need anything because doing their job is so worth it. Just being a part of it, being able to watch all of us is so worth it, being a part of this. So they give thanks and praise. That's it. They love their lives. 
All right, so here we go. We continue. So chapter 72 gets very in-depth about the path of the sun. So the next point is the book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel who is with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. Enoch 72, one. They're saying he knows how long it's going to be. He, you know, all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity, which means it, it's going to keep going until eternity. All right, then we got chapter 73 and 74 are very in depth about the moon phases and path. All right, and then we got the next bullet point is chapter Enoch chapter 75 verses 1 to 3. And the leaders of the heads of the thousands who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year. And these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. And owing to them, men go wrong therein, for those luminaries truly render a service on the world stations, one in the first portal, one in the third portal of the heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal. And the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. For the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel Uriel, Uriel sh showed to me, whom the Lord of glory has set forever over all the luminaries of the heaven, in the heaven and in the world, that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth, and be leaders for the day and the night, i.e. the sun, moon, and stars, and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven. Oh, that was a lot. All right, so why did I read all that? Well, it talks about the reckoning of the year. So 364 stations, 364 days, and then the reckoning of the year is the day of the Lord is the 365th day. The reckoning of the year. So you've got to imagine there's portals going from the east to the west. There are portals that the sun and moon come out of, and they are traveling eat from east to west constantly and once they get all the way to the west and they can't go any further west then they have to go all the way back to the beginning which is the day of the reckoning which i talked about uh, in part two and when i said that the 365th day is the day of the lord and then the 366 is every four years because the moon has four phases and it's only every fourth year that the moon, the new moon is celebrated. That's why you got Sunday and Monday. They're the first two days of the week. Right? The other ones are, all the other days are a mixture of different things. You know, different Latin words. Uh, you know, it's, they, they change it. There's different Roman words. Or, you know, the Saturn, Saturday, Saturn Day. Uh, there's all sorts of different things going on with the names of the days of the week. But Sunday and Monday are the first two days. Uh, why is that? Because they were the two days that were talked about. You know, that's they, you had Sunday and then you had Monday. They were just one day of the year. And Monday was just every fourth you know, one day out of every four years. All right, the luminaries continue, and the names of the sun, see, the, the sun is named, and the names of the sun are the following. The first, Orjeiras, Orjeiras, I don't know how to say that for sure, and the second, Tomas. So they're the names of the sun, Tomas and Orjeiras. Uh, next verse. And the moon has four names. The first name is Azanya, Azanja, the second Ebla, the third Be Benasi, and the fourth Ire. 
that they has four phases. These are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun, there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon, and in definite measures as it is transferred to till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they set and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north and come forth through the eastern portals on the face of heaven. Enoch 78, 1-5. Alright, then we got 78, 10, and 11. It says, And Uriel showed me another law when light is transferred to the moon and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun. During all the the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during 14 days. Her light is accomplished in the heaven, and when she is illuminated throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. So it's telling you which way the sun, or I'm sorry, which way the moon is facing is depending on how the how it's receiving its light, whether it's giving it to itself or the sun's giving it to it. Then you got 78, chapter 78, verses 14 and 17. On the side whence the light of the moon comes forth, there again she wanes till all the light vanishes and all the days of the month are at an end and her circumference is empty, void of light. Okay, that's saying it's a, about to be a new moon. And then 17... At night, she appears like a man for 20 days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her light. Now, I'm not sure what that means when it says she's a man for 20 days each time. I, you know, I have no clue what that means. And by day, she appears like the heaven. I don't know what that means. But why I include it, it says, and there is nothing else in her save her light. You know, the moon's plasma. There's nothing else in it but plasma. It's light. That's all it is, is light. A spirit of some sort. And the waning, which takes place in the first portal in its season till 177 days are accomplished, reckoned according to weeks, 25 weeks and 2 days. Enoch 79.4 reckoned according to weeks got counted all right so here we continue it and with enoch 82 4 to 5 and 7 blessed are all the righteous blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven entering into and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter with them four days. Owing to them, men shall be at fault and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. And that's emboldened, whole reckoning of the year. Yeah, man shall be at fault. Okay, anyone just listening, that it is not me saying that. It's an, another line in here. Yeah, men shall be at fault and not recognize them accurately. You think? And the account thereof is accurate and the recorded reckoning thereof exact for the luminaries and months and festivals and years and days as Uriel shown and revealed to me to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world has subjected the host of heaven. Enoch 82, 4 to 5, and 7. Chapter 82 ends by stating the names of those who are in charge of the intercalary days and how long their season is, and more about them. All right, so now we're going to come up on some of these uh, slides, some of the chapters in here. And you guys can read all this if you like. I'm not going to keep it up here. And here is chapter 18, 4 to 10. And then chapter 33, 2 to 4. 
And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth, whereon the heaven rests, and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names and their courses. I already read that one. But it's important to know that, that they're all their own thing. They're all living things doing their own thing up there on purpose. We got chapter 38. And you got verse 3. When the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed, and the sinners judged, and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect, from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted, and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of Spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. Then shall the kings and the mighty perish, and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. And thenceforward, none shall seek for themselves mercy from the Lord of Spirits, for their life is at an end. All right, chapter 41, verse 5 through 9. And I saw the chambers of the sun and moon whence they proceed and whither they come again, and their glorious return, and how one is superior to the other in their stately orbit, and how they do not leave their orbit, and they add nothing to their orbit, and they take nothing from it. All right, I already read all this. You guys sh should keep uh, reading. It's all really good stuff. Chapter 69. And that, and through that oath are the depths made fast, and abide, and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity. And through that oath the sun and moon complete their course, and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity. And through that oath the stars complete their course, and he calls them by their names, and they answer him from eternity to eternity. Saying they don't, they love what they do, they just do it. That's what they're made for, to watch us. So they love watching. I'm sure many people many times have felt like you're being watched. That it's some kind of Truman Show type of thing. Well, you are being watched by the watchers. That we call stars and the sun and the moon and planets. Now chapter 72, 1 through 13. Now this is, again, I didn't break any of this down because you guys should read the whole thing it's so much for me to read off but you should pause it and read it and here's the rest of chapter 72 14 through 37 it's talking about the the different parts of the sun and the moon and how many parts of it there is of light and darkness in the moon when that's setting. Well, here we go. This gets the moon chapter 73. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. You guys should pause and read that. In chapter 74, and I saw another course, a law for her, and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution. And all these URL, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed to me in their positions, and I wrote down their posi positions as he showed them to me, and I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished. And then he talks about how many days there are in the year. And again, Sunday and Monday aren't included in this. He's not including them. They're their own thing. Separate from this. Like there's 364 stations. And that's what it talks about. The 364 stations and the reckoning of the year. Then you got chapter 75. Now I read some of this already in the beginning. You guys can pause and read that. Chapter 76. 
think any of you guys can pause this and read this here. And he talks about his son Methuselah in here. I think it might be the first time he mentions his son being Methuselah in the book of Enoch, chapter 76. Methuselah is a very interesting character as well. So chapter 78. All right, it just gets more into the names of the sun and the moon and saying that their circumference is that like of heaven, which means they're disc shaped. And now, my son, I have shown thee everything. Chapter 79, verse 1. And the law of all the stars of the heaven is completed. And he showed me all the laws of these for every day and for every season of bearing rule and for every year and for its going forth and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week. And the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal, for in this sixth portal her light is accomplished. And after that there is the beginning of the waning. And the waning which takes place in the first portal in its season to 177 days are accomplished, reckoning according to weeks, 25 weeks and 2 days. And she falls behind the sun and the order of the stars exactly 5 days in the course of one period. Okay, 5 days in one period. And when this place which thou seest has been traversed, such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which Uriel, the archangel, who is their leader, showed unto me. Chapter 82, 4 through 11. <sighs> yeah, there's so much to this. I mean, you guys really got to dig in and, and read this. It's talking more about the intercalary days at the bottom there, and there's 360 days. Uh, I'll read the last bit there. So, uh, 10 on, it says, from 10 to 11. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year, enter first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months, and for the three hundred and sixty days there are heads of over thousands who divide the days, and for the four intercalary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. So there you go. You got a whole bunch of different people involved in this. Beings, not people. And then chapter 82, 12 through 20. You got all this as well. All right, now this brings us to time. Chapter 58, 6. And there shall be a light that never endeth, and to a limit of days, number of days, they shall not come. For the darkness shall first have been destroyed, and the light established before the Lord of Spirits, and the light of uprightness established forever before the Lord of Spirits saying that the light will never end and before darkness hits it's going to be nothing but light and chapter 4 or I'm sorry chapter 74 verses 10 through 17 this is talking about all, how many days there are in the year and how the moon falls behind and if you are to count like how many days there are in three years five years eight years and so on then chapter 75 verse 1 and 2 all right i have a note here at the bottom the reckoning of the year is a day unto itself in honor of the sun the leap year every four years represents the moon and the four phases of it there are 360 number days in this calendar there are four days set aside for the beings who have dominion over each season this brings us to 364 the day of reckoning is the day of the lord a day set aside to give honor and worship to god the sun the moon accounts for the final quarter day one fourth as it has four phases and only the new moon receives its own day out of the four phases 
once every four years, totaling 365.25 days every year. All right, then we got chapter 80. URL saying, I've shown thee everything and revealed everything to you. This, everything about the sun and the moon. And in the days of the sinners, the year shall be shortened, which last year was the shortest year. It was actually less than 365.25 days, and we're on uh, pace for an even faster year this year. And their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields, meaning things will grow later in the season and, you know, start later. And all things on the earth shall alter, which it, it all has, and shall not appear in their time. You know, like summer and spring having moved up a month. And the rain shall be kept back and the heaven shall withhold it. I guess that's talking about trail. And the fruit won't grow in its time, and the moon will alter and not appear at her time. You know, it's saying that things will start getting even more weird than they are right now. You know, we're not even down there yet but with the, where the fruit is wrong. Maybe we're beginning there, but we're, we haven't got to the moon yet. And look, it'll say that it says that the sun will start messing up and then the stars will start to mess up and everything will be concealed from the sinners. And evil shall be multiplied upon them and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all. All right. Well, that's everything, guys. This is... The book of parables it goes on but you know we don't have to go through any further we accomplished what i wanted to accomplish i am thankful for everyone for sitting through all this and this has been my presentation on the breakdown of the book of enoch i hope that it is making sense to you about so many different things. I hope you're all making connections in your mind. And I hope that this is really helping you understand that if this is a simulation, which it appears to be, is to how it's read by the Book of Enoch, an organic situ uh, simulation, some kind of consciousness simulation, and Jesus is encoded. So if the simulation is the hero's journey, which it seems to be, and Jesus is the Easter egg that's encoded all over, and the book of Enoch talks all about the Son of Man and all the different things that Jesus is credited for, and all these things describe Jesus. You know, if that is the case, then it's the truth. To me, it, it seems to be that way. And I had already come to the that conclusion with all of my communication with Jesus and all the visions that I had with Jesus and just the relationship that I have with Jesus that I've grown since January. So when I started reading this, I'm like, oh, wait, the son of man. I'm like, all right, let's talk about this. And then it piqued my interest more than what everyone usually goes to the fallen angels and the Nephilim. And, you know, it talks about Nephilim in like one chapter. Everyone always talks about chapter 15. And the, the entire book is so interesting, especially when you start bringing Ethiopia into it and how 9-11 is the first day of the year for them. And Ethiopia uses the Book of Enoch's calendar, you know, more closely than anything else. And it was the year 2012 and the year 2020 here. So that's interesting. If the Mayans were using that same calendar for South America, because they were in the Southern Hemisphere, as Ethiopia is in the Southern Hemisphere, and if everybody started the 
calendar at the beginning of spring as it was as it talks about in uh, the book of Enoch 2 you know to Enoch that spring would be the start of the year well then our calendar from the northern hemisphere would be six months off of the southern hemisphere so their first day of the year is September 11th ours would be like March 21st or so You know, this is all just really interesting stuff. The book of Enoch is in the Ethiopian uh, Bible, canon Bible, you know, canonized, meaning it's a, a part of the Bible. And it used to be a part of every Bible, and then it was taken out. I don't know if it was the final one taken out, but it was one of the final ones taken out. But as you can see, all this stuff, obviously Christianity gets their stuff from somewhere and they get it from this because Jesus fulfilled these prophecies some of them a, a decent amount I'd say and then what happens is that it, it's encoded into the, the game and now we can see exactly what it is because we have the advantage of looking back on a 5300 or so uh, years of what was prophesied about him how his calendar lines up exactly with the prophecies in the book of Daniel and if you look at the book of Daniel uh, the way that the weeks are all numbered it just lines up with the calendar of Enoch. And you don't need to alter it in any way. It all lines up using the book of, or the calendar of Enoch. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoy. Please give it a like and a share. Please uh, just leave a comment if you like it. All right. Goodbye, everybody.